but there was a funny tweet I saw, well, X, uh, something I saw on X, and it said, I hadn't heard about Chris Davies before 9pm on Wednesday, and by 9am Thursday, I, I couldn't live without him being the Blues manager. Like, <laughs> like, like, he, said, he said, football's mad, like, you get these ideas, and you do your research, and suddenly, like, he's the man. So welcome back to Smallith Alliance FC. And there's absolutely no doubt that there is an awful lot going on at Birmingham City Football Club at the moment. The new manager has recently been announced. The transfer window is about to open uh, very, very shortly. Uh, and there's lots going on in and around the club. Uh, and myself, uh, Matt, in this uh, video, which is unscripted, are just going to have a general discussion about where we are at the moment, what our thoughts and feelings are about the club, um, and just bounce our uh, own opinions, really, uh, between us. So, um, Matt, what's your thoughts on where we are at the moment uh, as a club? Any things that have uh, sort of stood out for you? Uh, I feel calm, excited, refreshed. I think... Because we appointed the manager last week, it's just give the fan base a bit of a breath of fresh air. I'm seeing a lot of positivity circle back around social media. And, you know, I'm glad that storm around, oh, I don't want him. Oh, he'd be good. You know, all that controversy about the names and the rumours going around. And fair enough, the club did their due diligence and they did a pretty good job of keeping things under wraps, to be honest. But there was a few names, your Alex Neals, your Heckin Bottoms, all those names that were floating around. So... I'm glad that's all over. I'm excited for the transfer market to to open. I'm excited for uh, Chris uh, Davies to sort of put his mark on the team, get some transfers in, maybe get a few interviews on the Blues channel, hear from him, get a little bit about his vision and stuff. But overall, I think excitement, calm, yeah. calm, and looking forward to getting the fixture list as well. I'm looking forward to planning out some of those away days that we all, we uh, we look so much forward to. Well, I start far away, and uh, for me, I, I you know based on the manager appointment, I, I you know we we we've said that we need to see a change in the club and the the way that the club approaches things. We've seen that in the manager appointment. Is I think it's been hand, re, handled really well, uh, and I'm really impressed with the way that they kept it under wraps. I mean, Chris Chris Davies was a real surprise. You know, all the names were speculated uh, before he was appointed. And I think I only seen his name virtually the day before, two days before that he was linked. So, who's that? Do you know what I mean? And when you look into yeah. it, you realise who he is and uh, and why the club have actually yeah. appointed him. But uh, there was it, a, sorry, sorry to interject, but there was a funny tweet I saw, well, X, uh, something I saw on X, and it said, I hadn't heard about Chris Davies before 9 pm on Wednesday. And by 9 am Thursday, I, I couldn't live without him being the Blues manager. Like, <laughs> like, like, he, said, he said, football's mad. Like, you get these ideas and you do your research, and suddenly, like, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, I think a lot of Blues fans had never heard of him. But when we did our research and found out, I think a lot of Blues fans, the majority of the fan base is very happy with this appointment. I think so. Well. No, 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 that's absolutely fine yeah. because I think that's a fair point. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to me, you know, his appointment was was eagerly anticipated by the, not his, the manager appointment first, um, not knowing who it was, uh, was eagerly anticipated because I think uh, there was some, um, yeah, you would say panic around the fan base looking at what's going on at the clubs and the uh, signing players, etc. Um, but it, that the appointment of him now signifies the actual pushing of the start button I think now because now we have got the manager in place we can start to now uh, really in earnest start to look at uh, you know, going to the transfer window looking at players um, and uh, you know that that will automatically start the momentum really building now but the the, the manager appointment was really crucial and there's a lot of uh, posts on social media when it's going to happen I have seen as well um, a few people have commented well where's his interview yeah, yeah. Have you yeah, seen that? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, where, where's his interview? Because normally a manager's appointment, and we had we had a good experience with this last season with the amount of managers that we had. Um, <laughs> normally, you'd, someone's appointed, and within hours, the, the club have got a uh, an interview with yeah. the uh, with the manager. But I wouldn't panic about that. Like I say, I'm I'm really impressed with the the new approach they've taken to the appointment to the manager. Kept everything under wraps, yeah. um, and also that I'm sure that uh, they will have an interview on uh, yeah. on so Blues TV. It's worth saying imagine. at the time of recording, there's no manager, but who knows when we wake up in the morning or. In the next few days there could be one of yeah, that bad points point. yeah. but at the time of recording it's been, it's been four days and we haven't seen a manager recording so your point is valid that they've delayed on getting something out because you know Rooney came in day after Rower even had one the day after you know Mowbray I think was the day after so they tend to get one 24 hours after the appointment don't they but uh, it's the summer isn't it people on holiday you know there's a lot going on behind the scenes yeah. who knows What's going on at Birmingham City at the, at the camp during this little summer break in between? The I think, I think, I think, the, market, I think so. the Blues fans, I think like us, are just keen to hear from him, you yeah, know, yeah. To, just to get his thoughts. And obviously, we've seen in the written text about agree. how excited he's about being at the club and what he wants to do and what his vision is, which is absolutely fine. But we want to hear from him. Yeah. Uh, so, I've, but that will happen. I'm, mm. I'm, not, I'm not really worried or, or panicking about yeah. that as well. Um, well I sort of just to uh, talk about again. Uh, I, I know people love getting caught up in the drama, and I do as well. Um, but on social media, I saw today that we've been linked 
linked with uh, Scott Twine. Yep. Uh, Mark Leonard uh, from Northampton's had a really good couple of seasons down in League One. So some pretty big names if we can catch them. Uh, and I think that sets the standard for the club if we can get those big names down. Let's see what happens. But I'm intrigued. We've been asked this a few times in the comments and a few Blues fans have been um, speculating on social media. Why do you think, that, it's difficult to tell, I know, but why do you think the club's transfer budget is going to be this season as we go into the transfer market? Well, we're in League One, aren't we? So we're, we're complying with different... Um... Uh, FFP sustainability profitability rules and I'm not I don't know the, the ins and outs of what that actually is but I know it's different in League One but it's the type of players we're going to attract isn't it you know that will determine how much we're, we're going to spend they will have a budget uh, all I know is it's probably going to be one of the probably the best one in League One um, but I don't think it will be the levels that we would have invested if we stayed in the championship because we're in a different league now aren't we so it's hard to put a figure on it to be honest Matt but I know that you know we've freed up a lot of space now in the wage bill in, because of the players that have, uh, have now ended contracts and be released yeah. uh, the loan players have gone back so there is capacity in there to uh, to build again but I, I can't really put a figure on it because I don't I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna press you hard 10 million 20 million 30 million what, what do you uh, think as a ballpark we're talking well, here we're, we're, we're in league one aren't we yeah. um, I don't think we're going to be going for I, I don't think we're in a market where we're not going to be paying no. 7, 8, 9 million for we players be, no, because no. we're in league one aren't we and those types of players are likely to be going to Championship and probably even Premier League, lower Premier League clubs. So, um, I, I don't know, fifteen million if, yeah. I to, if I was to put, uh, you know, but, but I think that's a lot in League One. Yeah. Well, someone in the comments, I, I put in the comments, I responded to someone, I, I have no idea who it was, I do apologise, but uh, I said uh, 20 million would be yeah. would be the ceiling of what we would uh, Yeah, the, the, that's spend. the thing about League One, Matt, it? you know, we, we it, it puts a ceiling really on the, not, yeah. not what we want to spend, but what we can spend based upon the quality and type of players that we are that we that we're going to get. Well, you referenced FFP. There is no FFP in League One, but it's yeah. it's, it's, it's the salary cost management system yeah, which you yeah. can you can only spend sixty percent of the club's turnover on players' wages. That's the financial cap that you have to face in in League One. So that's interesting as well because I think we're going to be able to throw some serious wages at players. Um, and, it's just whether they want uh, to come and play in League One. Yeah, because, because when you talk about Mark Leonard, um, you know. Preston North End are interested in him and it's already been circling on social media that we would be able to outbid their salary and wages for um, him anyway but it's, it's it's whether he wants to play in League One is the big question because if you're a young player and you've had that League One experience what would you do? Would you push up into the championship just because it's a championship or would you hang around in League One with a club which has a bright future well, that, and prospects of new point. owners? That's, that's what we've got isn't it? You know you sell you sell that to players that you know we're not planning to hang around here you know we've got a vision to move this club that, you know that could be really attractive okay fine you know I've got one season in League One you know hopefully you know we can, we know that League One's going to be tough it is going to be tough uh, so we can't guarantee that we only be there one season but that, that could be attracted to a player um, and you know there's, there's other players that, you know uh, the, other clubs have been linked to him as well to, to Mark Leonard yeah. I mean, Sheffield United Wrexham yeah. uh, uh, and other teams as well so we're going to have competition for these types of players but what the difference with us is is that we can sell the vision yeah. and uh, obviously the now project have, yeah the project yeah. And, now, and now with our new our new manager you know that that might be an, also an attractive yeah. option for certain yeah. types of players as well I've got one more question for you and then my questions are, are done for firing at you but it's an interesting one because you mentioned about League One being tough and you mentioned about we hope to be down there for one year and I'm sure most Blues fans would agree that we don't want to be down in League One for any longer than absolutely necessary and the bookies are tipping us as favourites everyone's going to come to St Andrews as a cup final let, let, let's just call it what it is this isn't arrogance this is just facts and we know this is going to be a difficult league we're not going to walk this league I don't yeah. think we're not going to go right down every week and turn teams over four or five. No, it's just not going to happen. We have no, to adapt to League no, One. No. But do you think the appointment of Chris Davies, and again, I know it's a big question, lots of unknowns, do you think that hires the risk of us staying down in League One while we go through maybe slightly a bit of a transitionary period? Or do you think it makes us even more hot favourites because... Um, you know he's going to go down there, all guns blazing, to set his sort of style on the team. I think it, it, to me, it's 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 increased our chances of going up. If I'm in, in my opinion, uh, and also as well, I think it's not just about him. It's about the fact that we haven't got relegated and been stuck with loads and loads of players that that are on high contracts, like like, like happens in lots of leagues. We we are at a point in our um, future in our history where the, a lot of players are out of contract, so therefore we have the opportunity to bring in players. Because the problem with, with going down like that, if you get relegated and you've got lots of players on long contracts and high salaries, because you're relegated, nobody wants to. You can't get rid of those players. And therefore, now you're trying to transition those players to play in a lower league to try and get you back up again. But we're not in that position. Mm -hmm. We now uh, have a complete fresh restart and uh, you know a lot of players are going to be coming in. But yeah. with Chris Davis, I think from what I've seen, um, he looks like the type of coach slash manager 
that is going to be able to adapt our team to get them to play what the style of play they need to get out of this league so in, in my opinion I think that okay. increases our odds um, with him uh, but there are other players we've been linked for and obviously uh, we will do uh, videos in when we are linked with or, or, or there's a good chance that we're going to sign players but if we were to do a video every time we, we, we were linked with a player we'd be doing them like two three times a day <laughs> yeah. um, you know we saw that with the manager as well we saw certain media outlets that yeah. were just speculating all about the yeah. managers and oh this person's going to be about to be appointed it never happened no, no. we don't want to be a channel that does that we want to do talk about players that link to us, but but don't want to speculate that they are coming unless we cert are fairly clear that that's that's going to happen. Yeah, I think to be fair, it's worth calling it. I think we'll only do a, a video on a player that's actually signed because if you think about it, like or like, literally about to sign maybe the, the day before or something. Yeah. Because as you said, if we do that every time, we'd, we'd be here or or we'd be stuck in here with the, with the lock on, wouldn't we? Just recording videos all the time. We'd, yeah, we'd yeah. have two today. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, uh, we could name other players in, but that, yeah. it, 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 that's the problem with the media. You, you don't know where the provider of as well, you know, it's, 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 there's just links everywhere. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean to say that they're concrete links. That's, that's the problem, isn't it? And, uh, you know, we'll try and, uh, you know, keep up to date with the players as and when we're linked seriously or whether they're coming in yeah. as well. Uh, something else that, uh, you know, that uh, I've done if you noticed as well, the new kit was leaked. Yes. Did you see that? I did see the kit leak. Any thoughts on that? In terms of my thoughts on the leak or the thoughts on the kit? Both. Both. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, I'm a media professional, by the way. I don't know whether many people know or care about what me and you do, Dad, but uh, I do work with cameras. I'm a videographer by trade. So I do know what goes into marketing campaigns. I do know how much hard work goes on behind the scenes. I know there's a person who's had to go out and do these photos. There's a person who's gone out and done this film. And I know they're going to be gutted that this kit has been leaked mm. and all their hard work behind the scenes it hasn't gone to waste, but it just gets sour, doesn't it? And I feel like it, it ruins the big reveal a little bit. But I also don't think it's worth getting aggressive over social media on, you know, there's a lot of fans who have been like, take that down, you know, that's a disgrace and, you know, all this and stuff. And I, I get it. It's not cool. I, I don't I don't agree with leaks personally. I also don't think it's worth fighting about. But um, as an overall observation of the kit itself, I think it's a little bit underwhelming, if I'm going to be totally <laughs> honest. Just, 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 just being brutal. I thought we were in for this big, bestoke night kit, and it just looked a little bit plain and boring. However, who knows whether this is actually a um, a fake a fake leak to yeah, actually yeah. bring the real cat. Who knows? You, you just don't know. But uh, for me, a little bit underwhelmed. Yeah, I um, I agree. I don't know. It's a leak, and that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get like a night football managers leaked about, oh, this person's going to be the manager and it's completely false it could be the same with the mm -hmm. kit yeah from what I've seen on the uh, the, the, the the kit that was uh, that was actually leaked um, yeah I agree with you if that is the kit then uh, and I'll stress if that is the kit mm -hmm. um, it's like last season's yeah. kit with a white stripe in the middle because I heard we because mm -hmm. the club sold this big Nike relationship and this bespoke kit being made and this special relationship and I thought the kit would signal something a little bit more special to highlight that relationship or to highlight the importance of the kit Uh and to me, it just looked like a bog standard blues kit, blue and white, with a white line and down the middle. Uh, Do you know what, Matt? So. If the players turn up in bing bags and get us promoted I don't next care. season, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, yeah. I'll, I don't really mind. But I, th I thought I'd mention it because obviously a lot of um, there's a lot of you know p uh, people asking questions on social media about the no, kit and a, stuff like that. So it's a it's, it's, it's obviously a valid, a, it's obviously a topical issue, isn't it? It's yeah. a valid point. Yeah, um, no, it's a valid point. But, but, but what I will say about that as well, if that if that is a genuine leak, I think that heads will be rolling because that is not the way that Knighthead want to want to run this club. Uh, yeah. they, they'll get to the bottom of that and find out who's done that and. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be repercussions uh, for that because yeah. the whole—I mean, the kit's a big thing. It's a big it commercial a big thing, thing, isn't it, yeah, for yeah. the club? So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. be interesting in it as well. Uh, something else, Matt. That I don't know if you uh, have any comments on is that uh, season ticket yeah. prices were were released. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because you know I said a few minutes ago that was my last question. I was mm -hmm. going to bring up the, uh, the the season ticket thing. Um, you know, I think me and you are planning something uh, for next for, for back end of next week, aren't we, Dad? A bit, a bit more detail on this uh, in terms of, you know, the sacrifice with the season ticket prices, what the club's doing behind the scenes. So I won't go into too much detail, but when you get a, 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 a owners who are putting 15 million into a stadium, they're putting screens up, they're putting fan zones in, they're making a big, long bar in the cup, they're doing all these things... I don't think the season tickets have risen too drastically in our because I'm talking about me and you here. Me and you have to pay an extra tenner per year per season ticket, and I get it, Blues fans. You know, uh, you know, times are tough for a lot of people and a lot of families, and you know, ten people, ten, yeah. ten pounds, twenty pounds could break a lot of families. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying that lightly. Me and you are very fortunate, and we appreciate that that we can pay that rise. Um, so I think the trade off of fifteen million worth of pounds of investments for a ten pound rise this year, I think, is worth it. The only thing that really upset me was the. Uh, debate about the relocation of the corporate seats, which they've now expanded to the middle of the cop, which I think is a little bit unfair. 
I don't know the ins and outs of it. I don't know what the discount is. I don't know where they have to go. I don't know all the ins and outs. But the idea of turning something into some a corporate part of the stadium to me feels a little bit wrong and a bit American and a bit corporate to me. I, I, I would say, you know, as harsh as it is, that's inevitable. Because, mm. this, you know, let, let's make no bones about it. These owners are here to make money. Uh, and they are spending a lot of money on the club. Um, I think some people would argue, well, we've got relegated, so we're going to be playing like in in a lower league. Therefore, shouldn't there be a reduction? Uh, and there are reductions in certain parts of the ground. So, you know, what they've yeah. done is they've increased the prices in what they see as the elite seating, which is the top of the Tilton and the uh, and the Cop. Um, there have been reductions in other areas. In the Arthurs area, there's deals uh, in relation to... Lower Tilton's been lowered as well. Lower Tilton, uh, Tilton Corner, uh, and all those types of areas. So there have been certain areas that have been reductions, uh, but uh, I, I clearly they're setting the club up for this corporate hospitality um, because they want to generate extra income. And that's inevitable for a club that wants to, prog- wants to progress. I think it is difficult for Blue fans for some blues fans because as you say you know uh, season tickets aren't cheap anyway um but actually over the course of a season they do represent good value for money in relation to the cost per game if yeah. you go to every Our, game ours works out as 20 pound a game i don't think that's too bad for the modern for the modern game no of football. but 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 then obviously there'll be people on lower incomes that, that will say well that's still expensive and uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so the, this balance that the club have got to try and meet but i think we, we have to realize uh, blues fans that you know for years we've uh, had uh, owners that haven't invested in our club that uh, the, the the stadium's gone to rack and ruin. The the team's just nosedived into obviously uh, as part of the problem of where we are today, and we can't have it both ways. You know, we are exactly. we, we are we either want um you know uh, uh, owners like we've got that are going to invest heavily in the club and they're going to want some payback for that. Uh, the other alternative is we don't have them and we, the club just carries on going in the yeah. downward direction. So as harsh but, as it is, and we do understand Blues fans, we really do that uh, that you know that we we know that uh, you know that the the cost of uh, going to a football match nowadays is not cheap not cheap at all um, but unfortunately in the modern commercial world of football this is the way it is if you want a successful team mm-hmm. as harsh as that is um, that's just the reality uh, I do um, sympathise with the people that are going to be relocated um, because now they've been designated as corporate hosp- hospitality seats mm-hmm. but I, I, I also am not surprised that the club have done that if I'm honest uh, because I think if they really want to bring move the club forward, they're going to have to uh, create uh, environments where people pay for elite mm. um, seating, elite hospitality, and as you know, just I think it's the fact it's for it's forcing relocation is what doesn't sit right with me. You know, because people go to football games, you know, mental well being, they make friends with people around them. Well, that, that's no, what it's, some, it's, like, some, it's like a sense of community. Yeah, football I've, game. I've seen comments in some of the but, uh, the Facebook pages where people have actually had the email from the club telling them that, uh, that they've got to either pay an extortion amount of extra money to keep that seat for corporate hospitality. Hospitality, or they've been offered the chance to relocate to another area as close as possible uh, with a 10% discount. There's, there's something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. But ultimately, it's, they've still got to relocate. Yeah. And they've been, some of them are saying, well, I've had my friends around me for years. Yeah, exactly. And there might not be four seats together and all that. So, so it, is going to, it is going to be an upheaval for, um, for, for certain fans. And uh, uh, I do sympathise uh, with that. I, I can take a £10 hit for £15 million investments. What I can't take is, you know, so me and you are going to be paying 410 quid or whatever it is in the upper tilt in this season. You know, 500 600 Because we've seen it at Wolves. Wolves season yeah. tickets have gone 500 600 700 800 And there's some clubs charging a £1,000 for a season ticket, which yeah. if, you, you are going to price out 75%, 90% of our fan base at that, at that level. So for me, I, I can stomach... A ten pound rise this year for the fifteen million worth of investments. But as a word of caution to Nighthead, you do know what kind of club you've bought, what kind of fans support this club. So, you know, they can't be rising them astronomical because it that will turn it into this rich man's corporate uh, football club only, which we don't want. We want well, to keep the heart of this club at, at, at the team. I uh, think the, the more the, the more they put the price of tickets up, uh, the more pressure they put on themselves to provide us with a product that we want to go back and watch. Can, can, can you, you think of a, a scenario where you've got high ticket prices and a poor quality team your attendances are going to yeah. know. So they'll know that. So they, they're they taking a calculated risk, I think, by doing this as well. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, you know, we're not f- too far away now, Matt, from the transfer window opening. So yeah. there'll be a lot of excitement around that. Uh, and also the um, fixtures will be released yeah. on the 26th so, of June. June yeah. So when, when the season tickets got uh, announced last week mm-hmm. after uh, Chris Davies's announcement, it got me excited for two reasons. One was I was thinking about going down to St Andrews again next season. You know, me and you, Dad, we like the experience, don't we? It's a great, yeah. great time. And and two, it got me excited to know what the fixture list is going to be, what teams are we going to face when, you know, planning some of, planning some of our away days out. 
And uh, yeah, it got me excited for the season to start again. And, yeah, and, well, and, and again, with the transfer window only opening next week or week after next, it's, it's an exciting time. The, uh, the season will come around quick, Matt. It I mean, will. Uh, obviously, we've got the European Championships to yeah. uh, to come in between, but uh, you know, the League One Championship, League One EFL season kicks off on the weekend of the 10th and 11th of August. Um, so that's not a million miles Two away. Months, really? Yeah, that's yeah. It. So it'll come around really, really quick. Uh, so you know, that that to me. Is, I'm now obviously I think I'm over the the, the relegation shock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now I'm I'm actually looking forward now, particularly with after we've now got a new manager in place. Uh, looking forward to see what happens yeah. in the transfer window. Uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to the new season. Now. I'm looking forward to some away days. You know, if you, if you think about the way we travel in our in the numbers that we travel. Fair enough. I know we're going to be restricted by allocation numbers. We're going to look, we're going to take over. A complete stands, aren't we? And away end and if, away if, ends if, and stuff. If, it's going to be the away ends in these tiny stadiums have the potential to be absolute carnage. Some some, some of them are still terraced. Yeah, uh, some yeah, of them yeah. don't have seats in, so we're going to get in there, and it's going to be wild. Like I, I, I can't wait. I, I, I really think we'll have to get bring raincoats because some of them haven't got roofs on. Yeah. Right? So, so, so um, we uh, again have that to uh, have that to come, don't we? And uh, you know, we'll 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 see what the fixtures are, and obviously we'll do a video on that as well uh, when the fixtures are released, yeah, just to give good. the uh, the key the key dates and um, who we're playing and when. Yeah, that sounds good. But uh, I think that's all for me. I think um, you know, it's exciting. We've got a new manager in place. Transfer market soon. Fixtures soon. I feel like a lot of the fan base has now put that last season behind us. We can all move forward. And I'm looking forward to seeing Chris Davies put his mark on the team, get some transfers in and start building a squad. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. But so uh, what do you think, uh, Birmingham City supporters? Um, how do you think things are going at the moment? You know, you're happy with the appointment of the uh, the new manager, uh, looking forward to the transfer window opening, looking forward to uh, the next season. Let us know uh, in the comments below. We're always happy to read your comments and uh, and respond to them. We would really love the engagement we get on this channel. Uh, also, as well, a big thank you to everybody who subscribed to our channel. Um, you know, uh, last uh, a few days we've just passed 2,000 subscribers and we're absolutely really humbled by the response we've had to our channel. And uh, thank you so much for everybody that's uh, subscribed. But if you haven't subscribed uh, already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. If you haven't checked out our social media channels already, make sure you do that as well. Uh, you'll see the handles appearing on the screen right now for our Instagram uh, account and also for our X account. So check those out uh, if you haven't already done so. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And myself and Matt will see you on our next video.